All right, so we're back at the cylinder heads now. Um, I know I haven't been making videos in days. I was kind of taking a little break and uh, it's just kind of, we had a lot of rain days and even though that means I could be working in the garage, but sometimes I need to step away from using a respirator. Um, so and by no means my project or my videos have been uh, sequential, like shot in order. Uh, but I wanted to make this quick video as kind of like a, just as kind of a quick note going back on something that I already talked about a little bit. And I did mention that if I could get figures, I would come back and talk about it. Um, specifically, I wanted to talk about uh, the chamber work and more specifically, uh, carving a scavenge plateau. Um, I don't really have a finished one to show you. These are all the initial cuts. Uh, but from the factory on your exhaust side, it looks something like that. Um, you can see the rough kind of uh, sand texture from the casting in the, in the bowl still. These are completely untouched and factory. Uh, when I last left you, we were working on the short side radius. Um, we now have... Sp that is a European garden spider. You'd have to see my Facebook to be able to see... The they're known as an exploding spider, and I had about hundreds of those actually hatch on one of these lamps. So it's kind of funny to see them... a few of them here and there, and I try not to move them if I don't have to. Um, so anyway, so the scavenge plateau, I said that originally when I was talking about this in one of the videos, I said I wasn't sure on if there is a figure on either CFM, horsepower, etc. I did finally find that um, thanks to Mr. David Visard, who, uh, which I know like people had been doing this, so I wouldn't say he created this, uh, but he can certainly be credited for it, like maybe that is a fact. He's been in the business for that long, but either way this is called a scavenge plateau. Uh, more specifically an exhaust scavenge plateau, and basically what you're doing by flattening that out, like it's hard to get a good view, but I think you can tell what's going on here, is you're basically taking that hard edge and lowering it like a ramp. So think of it like a ramp, but basically what that's doing is off the factory, the exhaust cycle at the end is going to leave a lot of uh, unburnt fuel, um, or rather not unburnt fuel, excuse me, but it's going to leave stale air from exhaust not being able to escape. So this not only helps scavenge all that exhaust and get that much more out of it, um, it helps it escape faster, so it increases velocity, but also a thing to note on that is the air coming out at this point is leaving at about 500 miles per hour. So by cutting that ramp down, you're giving that much more relief by expanding the actual uh, chamber and allowing that to escape. Especially, this is only a little one, four, six sized valve. Like it's a relatively small valve. Um, do I have one here? Yeah. So here's an exhaust valve. See how small that is? Um, so relative to the chamber or the cylinder, like a four inch cylinder, it's a little bit small. So that helps to scavenge and kind of break that ridge a little bit better. But what it's also doing is giving you about a 3% increase in horsepower. So on a build like this is that little cut right there could be good for about 11, you know, 11 to 12 horsepower. Um, obviously, I would assume torque as well, just increasing the overall exhaust velocity. Um, 
But again, I didn't have a figure, so I was like, well, I don't want to tell someone, oh, it's five or ten horsepower and have that be way over and and it's, you know, more of a thing of efficiency. But it does net like a 3% increase and uh, according again to David Visard is that's without shifting the low end. So it's not like increasing uh, runner length or something and you're kind of moving the power band to a lower RPM. It'll also expand the potential of the RPM peak. Um, so I would say that most of the gains are probably going to be like in the higher end. So an engine like this where I'm winding up like 5,500, I'm sure that I'll see the full gain, but it's not like... I don't know if it's shown there across like in a broad range or if it's mostly toward the top where it's going to be increasing that by 11 or 12 horsepower. But um, I just thought I would make a quick video on that as an incentive to make that cut, especially, you know, if you're doing an E7 and you need every possible amount of of gain and flow and horsepower that you can uh, get. So uh, that's about all. I'll probably get back to these soon as I have a ton of stuff to do. Like, yeah, I was working, I jumped onto the fuel lines because it was something I could prepare real quick. Um, I have to kind of be in the right mental state to kind of um, get back to this. So hopefully no one has been kind of holding on and waiting for a video if they were following how to port these, but um, if you are smart, you will take your time so that you're not burnt out, so that you're not making like quick cuts or, or potentially nicking something or hurting something. So it's realistically, it is better to kind of take your time with something like this and spread those hours and hours out a little bit so anyway but that is a very that's a free way to gain three percent horsepower so just like our exhaust uh with the internal ceramic coating is good for three percent is this is also good for three percent 